So Alex, so you have a lot of clients, so you meet with a lot of people. I just want to ask, I'm really fascinated about this, that what do you think, is there any right time to buy, maybe right age or right financial stability in someone's life? When should a first time buyer or a newcomer in Canada should start, like even start thinking about buying a home? What do you think about it? A good question. And I think the earlier you start planning, the better, the best time to buy. I mean, the saying is always the best time to buy was always yesterday, but it's really, it really does come down to your own unique situation. You do want to have some financial stability. There's other factors that come into play, even such as your own risk tolerance per se. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you definitely don't want to just completely empty your bank account for your down payment and have absolutely nothing left. I would always suggest someone has some sort of a reserve there for a rainy day or we've just gone through COVID, right? How many people that was so unexpected. And if you didn't have, you know, in my, and this is my opinion, you should always have three to six months worth of um, income saved mm -hmm. for situations like that. As we've just seen, it may not be the best time for you, but again, there's other ways to get around this. Maybe you have a parent that co-signs or you have a gift or something. And, and we're just going through times where this is being more apparent that it may be required, especially if you're a single individual. Again, those are just some other options that you can always explore, but yeah, it really does depend on where you're at with your career. You know, how stable is that job? Um, are you able to make these monthly payments? Are you doing this? You know, uh, is your career going to change locations? So maybe someone such as what we have is an RCMP officer. Um, they may be changing locations on, you know, a few year basis. So my rule of thumb again is if you're going to stay there for at least three to five years, always a good option. If you're planning to move the following year, it might be a better idea to rent. Now, the reason mm -hmm. for that being is that the real estate market, it moves up and down upwards. It moves in cycles, it moves up and down, but over the long run, it's always moving upwards. And for the most part in the last hundred years, over periods of five years or longer, we've never seen prices stay down, even if they've gone down. But let's just say hypothetically, you're to buy now, we do see a bit of a dip in prices and you have to sell. Now you're selling for a loss. So it really comes down to is that first place that you're going to be living in, is that more of a long-term thought or are you just trying to, you know, get into it right away because, you know, your mom's friend's brother and everyone else is telling you to do so. So again, I don't think there's a specific number per se that makes sense. Um, and again, one other factor I'll bring up is, there is the conversation around, should I save 20% or not, right? Mm -hmm. Do I want to pay the mortgage insurance or not? And now I could give you several examples and actually look at numbers where 99% of the time it's going to make sense because of the appreciation. You're going to make that and more plus the principal pay down, which is going to cover that um, mortgage insurance in the first year, right? But for instance, let's just say you're a high income earner. Mm -hmm. Let's say you just got out of medical school. You might have all the student debt, but all of a sudden you're making 150,000 a year. Yeah. You may be able to accumulate that additional 10% in one year period, right? But for the average person, let's just say you're making 50 or 60,000 a year, how much can you really save in one year, right? It might take you two, three, four, five years. Yeah. Now, if the market's appreciating, and then the number I like to use is 3%, that's very conservative. You've seen in Toronto, we've seen it go up by over 10% in one year. Yeah. But even looking at it very conservatively, if you're continually chasing that market, even by the time you had saved what you thought you needed to, now you have to add an additional 10 or 20% on top of that. So yes, many factors to consider, but for the most part, if it's a longer term plan, the earlier you can get in, the better, as long as it's in a comfortable financial situation for you. Yeah, interesting. So Alex, like just now you mentioned that for the average person, it's going to take maybe some years to even save for the down payment. But like, and you may see, uh, it might be common and I really want your experience expertise here, here that what are some common mistakes the first time home buyers make during their first property? Like, and what, how, what do you think, like how they can prevent themselves for, from making those mistakes? I think some of the biggest mistakes are just not preparing early. So 
for example, the first thing everyone should be doing is getting a pre-approval for a mortgage. Gosh. Now that is when we'll say you're, you're a couple months out, but even before that pre-approval, you should be having conversations with people like myself, with mortgage professionals, with anyone else in the industry. What you want to do is find out where you are now and where you need to be in order to make that purchase. Now, a good example of that is let's say you've saved that down payment. You've got a good income. You know, you've used some online mortgage calculators and you say, Hey, I can buy a property for $500,000. But come that time when you actually go to get pre-approved, you didn't realize that your credit score was too low. So if you had, you know, done your due diligence a few months, a year, two years before found out, Hey, my credit score is 550. I'd like to get it up to 680. What do I have to do during this time period? You wouldn't run into that issue later on. Right? So that's one major issue. Again, there, there's so many that come up, but another one would just be making a purchase that I think, again, you just didn't do your homework on or you didn't educate yourself mm -hmm. before. So for instance, you're buying, like a lot of us will have to, a strata property. So a condo or a townhome or a semi-detached. We don't have as much semi-detached here, um, but I know it's more common where you're at. Mm -hmm. And not taking into account all these additional expenses. Right, because when you're renting, you're not thinking, okay, I have strata fees, I have to pay for insurance, um, any sort of, well, not as many repairs because that's typically taken care of by strata, but anything inside the unit itself. There's so many additional things that you don't really think of until it comes that time, right? So it just really comes down to doing your homework, educating yourself early, asking questions, finding the right professionals to speak with that are willing to talk to you you know, maybe it's a year out because that's a problem. I think some people may run into mm -hmm. is that you speak to a mortgage broker or a real estate professional and they tell you, come back, you know, in six months when you're ready. Right. Whereas my goal is I want to educate you now and empower you so that when that time comes, the process is going to be flawless, that we're not figuring, finding these things out at the last minute.